This video is not a masterclass on how to make super high quality cinematic masterpieces of documentary filmmaking. That's what creators like Mark Bone and Danny Gewurz are for. Their videos are glorious and you should watch all of them. This is not one of those videos. This video is quick and dirty and cheap and practical and fast. This isn't an aspirational video about something you might be able to do someday. This is a video about what you can do the moment this video ends, today. Even if the only gear you have is your phone, you can still do this. Here's how you're going to hack together a documentary style video. Story, interviews, voiceover, b-roll, sound effects, and music. Six things. Easy. <laughs> The first step is that you have to have a rough idea of the story you want to tell, so you can make sure to capture the footage you need to tell that story. That story might change around over the course of making the video, but you still want to have a solid starting point. There are lots of theories out there about story structure, but ultimately it boils down to this. Somebody wants something. Humans are empathetic creatures. When we know someone really wants something, we get invested. We're rooting for them. It also creates suspense. Do they get what they want in the end? That's the question that's going to keep people watching your video. Which are you more likely to watch? A video called Ingredients for a Perfect Sandwich or She's on a Quest to Build the Perfect Sandwich? One is about food, the other is about humanity. Documentaries are almost never about the actual topic they seem to be about. They're really about humanity and human stories, and the topic is just a vehicle. So before you start filming, just ask yourself, who is the somebody and what's the thing they really want? Maybe it's you as the narrator, maybe it's the person you're profiling, but it should be somebody. Somebody needs to be working towards something. Interviews are the juiciest part of a documentary. Humans are hardwired to sit around the campfire and listen to each other talk, so when a face shows up on screen telling some kind of story, we can't help but listen. We're hooked in. If you want to say something in the video, having it come out in an on-screen interview is way more interesting than just having a voiceover saying it. We can see the emotion. We can empathize with the speaker. We can connect with the information at a personal level instead of thinking about it just as objective facts. Because you already have an idea of the story you're trying to tell, come to the interview with a list of questions that will get the subject to open up and talk about aspects of that story. Basically, you're trying to get footage of them saying everything in their own words so you don't have to say it yourself. If you can tell the whole story without any voiceover at all, that's perfect. And then ask the same basic question in various ways so you can get different angles of them answering parts of it. That'll give you different options while you're editing. And always try to ask questions like, how do you feel about this? Why is this important? Why does this matter? Why do you care so much? So you can get material that reminds the viewers how high the stakes are and why they should keep watching. Sometimes you just can't get everything to come out during the interview, so you'll need to record a voiceover track. This is the voice of the narrator in the background explaining things like, Abraham spent the last decade obsessed with collecting every hip hop vinyl he could find. The voiceover gives context for the interviews, and it's the connective tissue between them that fills in the gaps for information you need to communicate, but that didn't come out during the interview. You don't have to do the voiceover work early. Sometimes you need to see what kind of footage you got so you know what voiceover you have to write. Then you actually write it and record it closer to the time you're finishing the video and you know exactly what you have to say. And you don't have to record the narration voiceover yourself, of course. It's easy enough to get that online. Just hire someone, give them the script, and you'll get the audio back in a day or two. B-roll is the additional footage you take to illustrate the ideas talked about in the interviews and voiceover. If you're interviewing someone about making sandwiches, you don't want the whole video to just be the camera staring at them talking. You want shots of them pulling ingredients out of the fridge, close-ups of different ingredients, making the sandwich, taking the plate over to the dinner table, taking a bite out of it, and so on. B-roll serves two purposes. The first is to illustrate what's being talked about. If you're talking about cutting tomatoes, show footage of a knife slicing through a juicy tomato. The second purpose of B-roll footage is to hide your edits. When you hear a documentary interview and the person explains something really clearly and concisely, that's actually probably stitched together from half a dozen different sound bites with some b-roll on top of it so you don't see all the cuts. It creates the illusion that it's just one smooth take. That's how I make these videos. I can barely string 10 words together without making a mistake, so I shoot a bunch, edit it all together, and then cover it with b-roll so it sounds like I said it all smoothly in one take. For shooting b-roll, here's basically what you want to try to capture, at least as a starting point. Location establishing shots, portraits of your subject, the subject in action, wide shots and close-ups, footage of individual objects, wide shots and close-ups, and the subject interacting with other people. If you can get coverage of those, you'll have lots of good options while you're editing. Sound is super important for immersing your audience in the story that you're telling. One aspect of it that you might not have thought much about is sound effects. We tend to think of sound effects as being intended for movies where they're faking something, so it wouldn't occur to us that a truth-based documentary might also need sound effects. 
but it totally does. Sometimes you can catch good audio while you're on-site filming. If you're shooting B-roll in a factory, for example, you can get audio of the machines while you're there. You should also try to record some long segments of audio on-site, which you can use to patch things together later. You could put a bunch of individual video clips together that would otherwise be jarring, but by putting a single background audio track behind them, you can make them feel neatly tied together. Other times, you might not get the audio you need on-site. If you're shooting an interview with a chef while they work, for example, your microphone setup is going to be optimized for their voice, not the sound of them slicing a tomato. So you can actually go in later and add sound effects where necessary to create a more immersive experience for the viewer. You can actually just download sound effects online and then add them to your footage. It kind of feels like cheating, but it's not. It's just a way to make your audience feel more present in the moment and more connected to the story that you're trying to tell. The first time this really hit home for me was when I learned that the skiing sounds you hear in the Olympics aren't real. They add those in afterward. It doesn't actually change the outcome of the events in any way, but it just helps them tell a better story. You would be absolutely amazed at the difference that this will make in the professionalism of your work. People will think that your video footage is better because the sound is better. Music is how you tell the viewer how they should feel about what's happening on the screen. Should they be nervous, relaxed, amused, excited? The music will tell them. You should think about music from the very beginning of the project, not as an afterthought at the end while you're editing. You can put together an initial soundtrack at the beginning and then listen to it throughout the project to help you get in the right mindset and create the vibe that you're looking for. It'll help your shooting by making you think about lighting, movement, and composition that'll work with the music that you're thinking about. And if you're on the fence about whether to pay for a music service like Artlist, Epidemic Sound, Musicbed, or Soundstripe, I strongly recommend that you do. You're going to need it. The free music you can find online isn't any good, and using the stuff you hear on Spotify will get you demonetized or sued. You need to use properly licensed music, and these are the places where you can find it. That's it. Six things. Story, interviews, voiceover, B-roll, sound effects, and music. And I want to see it, so get off YouTube and go shoot something already.